Good morning, it's this hiker dude, Dad. I am in Montana above the Madison River. Right now I'm hiking a trail called Refuge Loop. This is the spot that survivors of the 1959 earthquake fled to. This earthquake set off a massive flood and a rock slide that created Earthquake Lake. hard to believe what sort of tragedy happened here on August 17th, 1959. This is such a beautiful valley. Madison River Valley here. Right now it's all wildflowers. Mountain cliffs on the other side. Madison rushing below. But just before midnight, a 7.5 earthquake on the Richter scale hit this area. To the east is Hebgen Lake, massive lake with a dam. That lake shifted and dropped about 10 feet in places. Uh, three tectonic plates and two fault lines uh, come together there and everything just snapped water gush. It set off waves. It set off like mini tidal waves uh, that gushed over Hebgen Dam, throwing water down in here into this valley. There were four cracks on the dam. They were worried that the dam was going to completely give away. It held and was repaired, but the damage was done. At the same exact time, upstream from here, a rock slide of 80 million tons of rock broke free from those cliffs up there and jammed up the Madison River. The rock slide tore through a campground in less than a second. 28 people were killed. As the Madison River started to back up and create Earthquake Lake, houses, cars, campsites, people were consumed by this brand new lake that was conceived in minutes. Okay, there is some scat on the trail here. Uh, we are still in bear and coyote and wolf and everything else country. So I am prepared with the uh, bear spray so we don't have any more tragedies occur here. I'm trying to make noise. I'm definitely the only person in the area. Uh, there's nothing else up at the uh, parking area. So on this two and a half mile loop, I'm just going to assume I'm the only human out here right now. So I'm talking to you guys and I'm clapping and singing, which I won't record, but I am trying to uh, make a lot of noise and let everything else know I'm here. Hey bear. Hey bears. Hey bear. Hey bear. Nope. I'll keep going then. Hey bear. Hey bears. Coming through. I'm full of French toast and sausage, but I'm pretty gristly. Coming through. Here we come, bears. This is probably overkill, but I am absolutely alone out here in this two and a half mile loop. And just want to let everything know that I'm here. Hey, Boo Boo Bear, where are you at? Coming through. So the trail is marked with these blue uh, parachute 
trail markers. This area is called Refuge Point because it's the high ground in the area and any survivors of the quake and the flooding uh, were drawn here by campfires and car headlights and everybody gathered here at Refuge Point and uh, smoke jumpers. So forest fire fighters um, came in, helicopters landed here to bring supplies and to evacuate people. But one of the first signs that uh, people knew that that the survivors were here was a smoke jumper coming in uh, with supplies and to get information and everything else. Highway 287, which I drove here on from the ranch, uh, was blocked by rocks down at that end and up at Hebgen Lake uh, where the dam was, it was completely flooded out. So the smoke jumper brought that news. Hey, you can't get out to the west. You can't get out to the east. Let's just stay here, be safe, and we'll figure out a way to get you guys out. Right, so there's the Madison River flowing west in this big canyon, right? We're at the tip of Refuge Point right now, and you can see that's the beginnings of Earthquake Lake. So that at one time was forest. You got a lot of trees poking up out of the water. I think the whole lake is gonna be like that. It is, uh, ended up being 125 to about 175 feet deep in places. Uh, the lake itself is six miles long and about a third of a mile wide. But it starts here and goes west up through the canyon there. I'm going to hike back now. I'm just over halfway through this refuge point loop. Uh, but I'm going to head back and I'm going to go up to the visitor center area up at the north, uh, up at the west end, which is where the rock slide happened. So just imagine one more time, almost midnight, August 17th, 1959. You're camping, you have a home somewhere around here, and you feel the earthquake, a 7.5 earthquake. This area for the next month was riddled by aftershocks. As far west as Yellowstone, I think we're about 30 miles away, I think, from the uh, northwest side of Yellowstone. Geysers went off there. All their schedules were disrupted and, and reshuffled. But just imagine you see lights up here, headlights, fires, and you come up here and all you're wondering you know, is everything that you had down there is getting flooded. You're watching the water rise. There was a massive rock slide down there. 80 million tons of rock in one second, basically. It was moving 100 miles per hour. Meanwhile, up here, you don't know. You don't know if uh, Hebgen Dam is going to burst. There were cracks in it. When I drive back, I'll try and get a shot of that. Uh, but you don't know. If that burst, are you even safe up here? They had no idea. Coming through, bear. In your woods. There's lots of echo. Hey, bear. You're an all-star. Get your game on. Go play. Hey, bear. You're an all-star. Get your game on. So this looks like a lot of aspen trees here, but in reality, this is all one aspen. True story. Second largest living creature in the world is the aspen tree. There's going to be one main one, and these are all branches out from the root system. I learned that last night on our hayride at the Dude Ranch. Uh, according to Zach, our cowboy hayride driver, if you don't have a cowboy hayride driver, you probably need one. Anyway, Zach, he said the largest 
is a type of mushroom, I guess, fungus that grows out. So not any kind of an animal, but uh, yeah, these aspen are the second largest living creatures on earth. All right, so looking northwest into a different valley here, uh, we can see Beaver Creek down here that's flowing south that way into the Madison. But man, just look at this valley. So in front of these mountains over here, Earthquake Lake is flowing back in here and around that way. All right, well, this is a pretty cool trail. I actually, on this hiking vacation, haven't hiked for two days. We've been chilling at the Dude Ranch. But uh, yeah, I'm almost back at the car. Just walking through a bunch of pines here. Uh, nice little loop with uh, ridiculous history. Um, I'm gonna take off now. I'm gonna go up to the visitor center there. I think it opens uh, around 10. So I'm gonna head up there and see if there's any Cool things to show off up there. That's where the rock slide happens. So uh, stay tuned as I trip. Stay tuned. There's probably some uh, some cool stuff coming. All right. So right now I'm standing on top of the rock pile here on the north side. That scar, all that is what fell that night. That hold the top of the ridge everything obvious scar there fell down into the canyon buried the riverbed and flew up this side 400 feet so came down the wall there into the riverbed and 400 feet up this side and we're standing right here that is insane the volume of the slide was 80 million tons that would fill more than 6.8 million dump trucks, enough material to build a two-lane, three-foot-thick highway from here in Montana to New York City. <sighs> Look at these boulders, rocks, and all of this here on the far side. There, there's our rental minivan and a boulder for comparison. But all that got pushed from there down, completely buried 19 campers. They were never found and swooped up this side. That is insane. All right, so looking again at that south side scar, we're uh, just a little bit up the road here. Down there, you can see the Madison River down below. So they had to quick get the Army Corps of Engineers in after Earthquake Lake started filling up and dig a spillway to relieve the river which now flows out of the canyon here into this huge plain Wow absolutely crazy what nature can do in just a few minutes All right, so here we are at the visitor center, still on top of the rock pile, as you can see. And that's Earthquake Lake stretching out in front. Over on the far side here, I guess is where the spillway is. Visitor center here and the big scar where the rock slide came and flushed down and across this way. Okay, so here is just about one of the best views you can get here. You've got the trees submerged in the forefront. You can see the rock slide way at the end where the visitor center is, the light uh, tan in the forefront there. 
And then up behind it is the south slope there that just completely collapsed and caused that rock pile down there. Incredible. All right, so this is Hebgen Dam. This was built in 1915. It's about 700 feet wide, 88 feet tall. Hebgen Lake is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, most of the ride down here have been driving on it or along it. When the earthquake happened, the lake actually shifted. So the left side or the north side of it kind of dropped 15 to 20 feet. That's what caused the massive water waves to slosh and go over the dam. But it also exposed like it, the dam, the, the lake tilted to the left, basically. There were exposed docks and beached boats on the south side of the lake uh, when this happened. And it stayed that way. It shifted this entire huge lake. And there were cracks in the dam. They were repaired. The dam never broke or else the catastrophe could have been much worse. Well, that's it from Earthquake Lake. An East Coast guy, I'd never heard of this before. Um, just a massive, literally earth-shifting tragedy. Uh, hey, if you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. You never know when I'm going to come upon a story or a, or a place like this. A, a just geologic shifting like this is just amazing. Thanks for coming along and we'll see you next time. We're only about halfway through this vacation, so there's going to be a lot more from out west here. Thanks for watching. On a whim, we decided to add another state. Let's go, Taco, back to Idaho. Idaho. All right, another state.